Inmates, how's life behind bars? Not these bars, but these bars. Now today I've got an exciting new product that I really want to talk about and it's on the website now for you to buy. Now without mentioning any names, there's a brand out there that's made a protective anti-theft frame that goes around the TFT on your, well, on your TFT, on, on your GS, your RT, whatever bike it is you've got, it's not the RT is it? The S1000XRs, the RRs, um, uh, my new M1000R. So that TFT screen is the same on the, the newer GSs from 2021, I think, or 2020. But if you've got that TFT screen, there's a company out there that makes a protective anti-theft frame which goes around it, apparently, to stop people from stealing it. Now, there's loads of things all over the internet saying that people are having their TFT stolen. Now, do you know anyone personally that's had their TFT stolen off their bike? If so, please leave a comment down below. We see GS riders every day here in this workshop and I have never come across anyone who has had their TFT stolen or knows someone who's had their TFT stolen. So I think there's a bit of scaremongering going on there. Not sure, but we see that anti-theft frame on hundreds of GSs um, throughout the whole year all the time. So people obviously want them, they like them. Moving on to a slightly different subject, branding. Now, have you heard of the company RNG? RNG Racing, to be specific. What do you think of when you think of RNG? Now, because I can't hear what you're saying on the other side of the screen, I'll tell you what I used to think of when you'd say RNG Racing. And I'd be thinking of uh, cheap, affordable, cost-effective crash protection. I was never a great big fan of the branding and I always used to look at brands like Evotech if I wanted to spend a bit more money. One of the founders of RNG, I think he's now retired now, um, he's still around, but his son, Jack, is a very young man and uh, so I'm very, very sorry, I keep fogging up. Yeah, I, now I can't, see, I can't see myself on the screen now. Jack is now very involved in RNG as the company. And I've told him a couple of years ago what my thoughts are on the branding because I've never been that impressed with RNG as a brand. But over the last, I'd say, nine months to a year, they're really picking up their game. And he showed me something on his new S1000XR. Now, if you've been watching the channel, you'll see that we've just recently done a load of work to his S1000XR. Put a load of Denali gear on there, Denali can smart rear light looking really good. Oh, and also our powder coated bark busters. One of the things that you put on that bike was this new surround, which goes around the, T the TFT. So instead of it being a steel based surround, which is powder coated in black, this thing is CNC machined, billet aluminium. It is the dog's danglies. Basically, it's really, really nice. So what we're gonna do, I haven't fitted it to my GS. Tom's already fitted it. So I said to him, Tom, do what you need to do fit it to the GS, take it back off again, give me a call, I'll come out from the office and i come down to the workshop and film you putting it on. So that's what we're gonna do, do now. But yesterday, it took us five to 10 minutes to fit it to the M1000R. So take a look at that now. It really finishes off the TFT on the M1000R. I really like it. Now, this is not an anti-theft thing. If someone really wanted to go up to my M1000R and try and get a screwdriver around the back, and flick off the three circlips and pull it off, they still can. It's no use to them at all. Uh, or if they just wanted to get their fingers around the whole TFT and rip it off and damage all of the bike in the process, they still can. And it's gonna be the same for the GS. Now, the price point of this, well, you can see online, click on the link down below. It's expensive, but then again, it's a, a CNC machine, billet aluminium product. So it is expensive and it's much, much nicer than the other stuff that's out there in the marketplace. I'm going to show you exactly how to put it on your GS because the headlights got to come out. So I'm now going to hand you over to Tom because I have no idea how this works. He's already done it. So we're going to now watch Tom put it on the bike. Right. Before we even start, Steve got it wrong on the, on the M1000R. You can't just pull it off. The uh, three circlips are not visible from the actual bike. To take it off, you need to, if I'll come over and show you. If you wanted to pinch this, you've still got to take three screws off here and then three screws behind it. Then you can get to the circlips, then you can remove the TFT. You can't just pick the clips off 
as it is stationary. So basically, you're telling me I got it wrong. You got it totally wrong. Yeah, well, I didn't fit it. You I did. Know. Right, so to do the TFT on this, unfortunately, you're going to have to take out the headlight. To take the headlight out, you've also got to take the beak off. To get the beak off, you've got to take the side panels off. So right, it's a okay. complete front end strip of the bike. Start off by taking the seat out. You don't need many tools for this. Basically just a T25 and a T30 will pretty much take the whole bike to bits. We'll start off with the central tank panel. In fact, I'm gonna use the electric one. It's quicker. And the last screw holding it in is a T30, which is right down, down here. There. Okay, so if you want to see a more detailed description of how to take apart your GS Adventure or your GS, I did videos about two years ago. They haven't changed. Obviously, we've got the new R1300 GS. Carry on. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got the, we've got the new R1300 GS coming in soon, so we're going to be doing videos on how to strip that down as well. If you want to see those videos, I'll put links down below, links up here as well, so you can go straight through to the the strip down of the GS so you can see exactly how to get all this off in detail just in case you miss it if Tom doesn't do a good job which he, he's never going to do as good a job as me you want to bet? <laughs> taking the winglets off if you've got a GS obviously you don't have the winglets you just need to loosen the crash bars off either side Damn, this workshop's sexy. <laughs> Looks so good on camera. Now we just need to take the panels off the side panels, the screws out. So whilst Tom's doing that, this is a good opportunity for me to do a bit of a sales pitch. So if you're, if you're ever thinking about getting your bike kitted out by us, Denali stuff, uh, Easy Can, Can Smart, just so it can look like this basically or, or anything if there's anything you, you see on the website that you like you want to put on your bike well if you go to the fitting page there's a link at the top of the website saying fitting and you can read all about booking your bike into this workshop coming here we'll literally book the whole day out for you and your bike you can enjoy our fresh coffee our pastries come and hang out with us basically and we'll uh, kit your bike out so it looks so so good to move this panel, just pinch it there, yeah. pull it there, off. On the side, yeah? Yeah, just a matter of repeating the same on the other side. So because I was speaking throughout that one, please watch very carefully because it's the same this side it is on the other side. Three down there. Right, now we've got to take the beak off. Two screws under here. One. Two. Beak comes out. One more joining the two beak parts together on a GSA. One more. Thing. Now there's a technique for taking that off because you've got a fin that goes inside here. So I do urge you to click on that link in the description so you can see a detailed description of how to take your GSA apart. Also, you'll find sometimes a little rubber bungs yeah. stay attached to the bike. Just pop those off. And yeah, then... that's all explained in that stripped down video as well. But we don't, we don't want to make this video too much about this part of the strip down. It's all about getting to that TFT screen so we can put the new product onto it. Okay. You're also going to need to remove the screen. If you... Okay. We've only got a little dinky one on here. That's just two screws. 
Yeah. Just makes it a bit easier to get access. You also need to remove this, this part here. Okay. So just four screws. If you've got a light bar fitted, you'll need to loosen it for this next part because you need to take this grill out. What do you mean by light bar? If you've got one of our light bars. Okay, one of these, okay. Yeah, with your D7s or D4s, whatever you've got attached to it, because we need to remove this grill. And to remove this grill, this is in the way slightly. By just loosening it, okay. gives us enough slack. Okay, so that's just, yeah. just a bit loose. That's that. Okay. You take the grill out, it's just a screw, either side, T25. <laughs> <laughs> I taught him everything he knows, you know. Everything he knows. All taught by me. So a couple of little clips and little rubber bones. Yeah, this is tricky, this is. <laughs> this is a test. Is it going to go smoothly? Of course it is. Hey, stay tuned to the end of this video because we're going to show you something very cool with the ammo guard. Like right now, we can see Tom's face in it. But at the end of it, I'm going to show you a new filter that we've got behind there. Because right now, all you can see is a mirror, but we've got something cool behind there. Mm -hmm. Not road legal, but it's cool. This is the reason you've got to remove all of the, all of the plastics is to get to that one tiny little circlet there. Let's have a look. That one there. Right, hang on a second. We come right in on that. Before we remove those, you just need to take the two screws out the side of the he headlight. Okay. You can do it either or. So you're taking, all right, okay, let me get that one here quickly. So the screw that's just in there, it's gonna be the same one, the GS and the GS Adventure. It's that hole just there behind the turn signal. Same on the opposite side. T30. There. T30, cool. Get yourself a little screwdriver. Okay, so you're going for that circuit now, yeah? yeah. Okay, that is a circlip, so it's one of those things where you've got to put a screwdriver in behind it and pull it out. You've got to watch it because you so can, you can ping it. them across the workshop. Okay, it's one of those things where it's really hard to show you because obviously yeah. our hands get in the way. There you go. There it is, yeah. Also, when you remove the circlips, it's already fell out, but the little washers underneath it, you don't yeah. want to lose those. You should then be able to just pull the headlight out. So if your headlight looks different to mine, it's because we've got the ammo guard on this. It's all part of the headlight now. That's it. That's your headlight removed. Cool. And there we've got a complete hole in the face of my bike. And now you have full access to the three circlips holding the display onto the bike. One at the top and the two behind. So if people want to nick your bike, they're going to really have a job. If they rip it off, they've ruined okay. it anyway. So there's one circlip, and where's the other ones? One circlip there. Uh, where yours, yeah. And the, oh, right, where those circles are on the yeah. camera. Okay. One You're, there, one there, and I'll see the one at, at the, the top. top just there. Okay, cool. You also need to disconnect the power. All right, okay, the main plug. The, the main plug to the yeah. TFT. <clears throat> In my years of working on bikes myself personally, I've never really had to take TFTs off. So this is quite new to me, really. Three circlips removed. So then, now that is literally just sitting there. You can just pull it out from the front, yeah? Yeah, it's just sitting in its little rubber or grommets. From, from the back, should I say. So I'm hoping now it should just pull okay. out. So you can pull it out and come up with it. Yeah. Again. That's the dash out. Cool. Nice. That's what you're left with. There we go. Get all Steve's smudgy fingerprints off it, where he's thinking it's a TFT touchscreen. I'm giving this a really nice, really good clean because it's going to go inside the uh, brand new RNG screen protector. It's actually a screen protector as well as a big chunky metal surround that protects your screen. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah? 
just like your ammo guys, you need to give it a really good clean because you don't want any dust or rubbish inside there. Uh, my little tip from fitting the this, this surround on the M1000R yesterday is make sure you use a nice soft cloth, no bits of dust or, or grit or anything because it will scratch ever so easily. So uh, be very, very careful. Now I've prepped this one already, but Steve's already done a video with the one for the M1000R. You can see I've already put the plastic protector in there, screen protector, and the rubber gasket around the edge. Something there. I can see it. You can see it. It's like a little plastic. Yeah, yeah. Blow, blows off. I don't want us to touch it with the cloth because it might scratch it. Yeah. Okay. So I've cleaned that now. Yeah. Helps if I get it the right way around. That then just squeezes in. And because it's quite a tight fit, you can. Oh actually wow! Look at that. Because it's completely it. made to fit. Yeah. So it just fits look. first time. Hmm. Okay, but I take it there's a back piece going on this, isn't it? Yeah, there's it? a back piece, yeah. but you need to also just pack it out with some foam gasket. Oh, there's a scissor there. So you've got to cut, you've got to cut your own sizes off, yeah? Yeah. So Tom's cut out some equal little strips here. If you have a look at the size that we've gone for, because we did the one yesterday on my M1000R and we had to trim them down a little bit more. But you make them to the size that works for you. Let's see as we fit them. And he puts one like that in that corner. And he puts one like that in that corner. And one like that there. And one there. So it wouldn't hurt to replicate exactly what Tom's done here when you do it on yours. So I line it up now. Just so I don't want to actually see the foam. So I'm going to move that one. There you go, you can't see them at all now. Three mil Allen key. Right, now time to name all up. It's sealed the gap all the way around. And the foam, oh. foam inserts just made it all nice and snug. Let's have a good look at it then. <laughs> nice. That's that, really good. That is really good, yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Right, let's get it back on the bike. There you go. So we're just going to put the sir clip back on here and the two down there, I guess, and... Uh, yeah, plug it back in. One, two, three, and plug the connector back in. And it's just a matter of reversal, putting the headlight back in. So now you've got the headlight. Headlight, now. so you've got the little rubber grommets on the on the bottom, yeah. make sure theirs are attached. I think it's important to, to mention what we were just talking about earlier. Um, the adjustment for the headlight, okay, is not on the, these mounting points here. It's all on this little swivelly thing just there. So as long as you don't touch that, all we're doing is just mounting it straight back into the position on the bike and it'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. So these rubber grommets, line up with these two slots on the bike here. There's a little C shape. So you can see slots. the slot where the slot of the grommet has got to go. First of all, I'll just plug this back in. So plugging it back in at the back. Plug in and then push the little grey clip back yep. in. It's just a matter of lining it all up. So just to repeat what Tom's saying, he's just trying to slide the, the rubber bungs with a groove in them. So they slide through that C-shape metal piece that's on each side of the headlight. Yeah. So it just clips into place. I'm gonna put the two screws in the side of the headlight in just to secure it. So back behind the, the turn signals, putting those screws in. This is the tricky part, trying to get the washer and the circlip on at the same time. 
kind of got to squeeze and slide. That's one done. That's it, that's your headlight done. Just tighten up either side of the headlight to make sure they're tight. So he's just tightened up that screw there, one inside there, and the one on the other side as well. So they are properly tightened up. That is the headlight back on fully. Now I'm just gonna put the grills back in. It's hard to explain how the grill goes in. When you look at it, you can see where, there's, yeah. where all the points are supposed to clip in. There's two rubber grommets. As long as they line up, you're yeah. all good. The, the grill is something that I taught myself how to do. And uh, you just have to look at it and uh, you can see the obvious clips and screws that need to be undone. Well, it's not even screwed in. Well, it's, it's screwed in here yeah. on these two screws here. But once those two screws are out, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory how to remove it and how to put it back on again. That's the grill back on. And then tighten up your light now again if you have one. Yeah. So if you haven't got the extra light mount, which is hanging the auxiliary lights, this is the Denali light mount. If you haven't got that, then you don't need to do this bit at all. Just pop this back on now. And last one goes in that side. Pop the screen back on. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Upside down, mate. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Slides on its little runners. We just had to do a complete timeout for at least an hour because a customer rudely interrupted our filming because they wanted to spend some serious money with us. Just, anyway. <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually our local Derbyshire police. Do you reckon I can say that? Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's actually yeah. our local Derbyshire police. We're actually doing quite a lot of work with the police force at the moment. Why is that light red on my gimbal? Oh, low battery. Right, okay, so we've got the whole bike almost back together right so we've got the front windscreen on which as you just saw and we've got the tft back in place focus we've got the tft back in place it looks friggin' awesome I, I absolutely love it now as i mentioned earlier and also on the listing you notice that this this surround for the tft will fit a multitude of bikes with the tft screen now what i've noticed now we've got it on the gs it fits but it's a bit of a tight fit where the screen um, adjuster is. So uh, we know it works on the 1300, don't we? They, they tested it on the That's what they've they? listed it as, is a They've listed it that this will work on a 1300, which has the same TFT as a 1250. Uh, we've got our own 1300 coming in here any day now, so it's gonna be going on there. But we're, we're noticing on the screen adjustment, the, um, the framework which goes around the, the screen, it does touch, so as, it, as the screen is on fully low down, the metal work is just about touching the, the surround of the TFT. Doesn't bother me, so it shouldn't bother you. But if it does, if that's a huge thing for you, I thought I'd mention it to save you ordering this online. The whole thing just looks so much better than as it is standard. And don't forget, you've got that screen protection in there as well. So it's, it's, it's a win-win. That's fine, those. It barely touches. It's only, yeah, yeah, it's only yeah. like on its very, very lowest position. Right, so we're not going to show you how to put the bike back together again completely because, as I mentioned before, we've got videos for that on our channel. So you can see that screw by screw, how to get the nose panels back on. I'll put those links down below. Let's go straight forward to uh, the end of the video, showing you all the bike put back together again.
Is it? Look at that. That is just so much better. It's... So what do you think to this? Do you think it's better than the standard? I, I think it's so much better. It looks really, really good. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, really slick, really nice, well put together. So Tom, if someone wants to buy one of these, what do they have to do? Straight to a bike thing .com, go into RNG products on, this, on the drop down menu and you'll find it in there. That's right, on the website, RNG products. If you want to, on the category section, you can select bike protection as well and you'll find this product on there. So if you want one, get on there now. We've got plenty in stock to be fair. So it's not like we're gonna run out anytime soon. And if we do, they're literally two days away from us. So we can order them in very, very quickly. Too much information. Yeah, I was say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And tomorrow for breakfast, I'm going to have. <laughs> in the meantime, stay safe behind bars. Not these, not these bars, these, these bars. bars. See you in the next video.